guys, Mr. Edwards here, Centerville High School Automotive Technology. Today I'm working on a 2009 Volkswagen Rabbit. Uh, it needs some rear brakes done on it. Now, this video is not going to be a whole walkthrough of how to do the brakes. You guys have already seen that. This video is specifically about a different type of rear brake setup that you'll see on some cars. It's not extremely common, but Volkswagen obviously uses it. Um, it was much more common in the late 1990s and early 2000s. General Motors used it a lot on their cars. Buick, Chevrolet, Pontiac, all those cars. Um, and Nissan actually used it for a while too. Uh, older Maximas, older 350Zs. Uh, those are just a couple off the top of my head that I've seen have it. Um, many cars of that era had this style of rear brake setup. I'm going to bring you in here and show you what's a little bit different and then we'll go ahead and get it all taken apart. Anytime we're working on brakes or anything in the shop, really guys, uh, you want to make sure that you have your safety glasses on. We're going to have chunks of brake dust, rust, crust, stuff we don't want in our eyes coming off of uh, this car here in just a second. So make sure you got your safety glasses. Let's take a look. So bringing you in here, obviously we have our rotor, our caliper, our bracket, our brake pads are up inside of there, just like always. Nothing different about the components themselves. However, every car on the rear wheels has a parking brake, right? You can you know, squeeze a, or push a pedal or pull up a handle and uh, lock the rear wheels. Especially on a car like this that's a manual transmission, that's important to have working. Um, and on this style of rear brake setup, that parking brake is actually built into the caliper here instead of being a separate drum brake system inside the brake rotor like it is on a lot of rear brakes. The way it works is that when you pull that handle or push the pedal, the parking brake cable is back here, and I'm going to move you guys so you can see, it mounts up to the back of the brake caliper, and you guys will see once we have the caliper pulled off, um, how that functions and what it does. Basically, instead of pushing out some brake shoes inside the rotor to lock it, all it does is activate the caliper as if you stepped on the brake pedal, um, but it doesn't do it hydraulically with brake fluid, it does it mechanically with a cable um, through the parking brake system. Let's get the caliper pulled off and then you guys will be able to see what's different inside this caliper and how we have to treat this style of rear brake system a little bit differently when we're servicing it. So with my rear caliper taken off, hopefully the fan in the background is not giving you guys too much noise, it's hot in here, but with my rear caliper taken off, um, you guys can see that the piston that comes out and pushes on your brake pads um, looks a little bit different than a typical caliper piston that you guys might have seen before. I'll show you a picture of what one of those looks like that you'll see on a lot of cars. So you'll see this piston here is, for one thing, it's solid, and it's got these two little grooves in it, top and bottom right there. Those are designed to be able to fit a special tool on it because instead of pushing this piston back with the um, caliper piston tool we typically use, this piston actually has to turn back in like a screw. You guys will see what I mean by that in just a second. It has to turn clockwise and spin back into the caliper. That's just because you know the parking brake's built into it, and that's how it has to be set up. So this special tool that I showed you guys a second ago is what I have to use to turn that piston back in. And I'm going to set it up here in a second um, and show you guys how it goes on the car. But it has this piece here. It has a backing plate that goes on it. And then I have to choose one of these adapters that'll fit inside my caliper piston in those two little grooves so that I can grab it and spin it back in. So I just need to test fit a few of them. We'll try this one here because it looks about right. And you just come up in here and line those two little teeth up with the grooves in the piston. And there you go, right there. You want it to fit in both the grooves, totally flush, just like that. Perfect. So this is the adapter that we need to use. Let me get the tool set up and I'll show you guys what it looks like. So this is what that tool looks like all set up on the uh, brake caliper here now. Now some of you guys might be saying, you know, whoa, if you've paid attention in the other videos that I've done, I'll go ahead and pull that out. 
Um, if you've paid attention to some of the other videos that I've done, whoa, you don't have the caliper hung up by a hook or anything. Are you letting it just hang down here? Well, I'm really not. Because of the way that the parking brake is built into this caliper, I've got this solid metal cable holding the weight of the caliper. There is no weight whatsoever on my brake line here. And that's why we have to hang our caliper up is because we don't want to damage our brake line. So my brake line ain't holding anything. This cable right here is what's holding my caliper up because it's all stretched out. So no need to worry about that. Now I'm gonna set you guys up and get started spinning this uh, piston back and you'll be able to see what I mean when we turn it clockwise to the right, righty tighty, pushing it in. I have to adjust this tool so that I continue to fill up all this space as that piston goes all the way in. Because what I'm trying to do is spin it and push on it at the same time so that it'll go in as it's being spun. So this does take some muscle, but I'm gonna hold on to my caliper and spin on this thing at the same time. And you gotta have really good hand muscles. Sometimes your hand will get tired and you'll have to switch hands. And as you spin it, as you just saw, the tool got loose now. So I have to adjust the tool too, so that it, like I said, takes up all the space inside the caliper. The way that I do that is by spinning this collar right here because it brings the backing plate further out. So I gotta hold the caliper, and I'm trying to hold it in a way that you guys can still see the piston. And spin it. Adjust it. And spin it. And if it breaks loose like that, you just gotta adjust it so it's tight again. Keep on going. And you'll know that you have it all the way in when the piston is flush with the rubber seal that's around it. So see how the piston face is actually just a little bit inside that seal. So this piston has now been pushed all the way in. One thing you want to pay attention to, you want to try to stop with the little grooves as close to top and bottom as possible. They don't have to be perfect, but this is good right here. As close to like 12 and 6 o'clock if we're talking about a clock face as possible. So that's what we've got here. I'm ready to go ahead and put my new rotors and my new pads on this car and I can put everything back together and we'll be all good to go. Real quick, now that I've got the rotor off, you guys can see there's no drum brake set up for the parking brake inside the rotor here. All that's in here is the wheel hub. So that parking brake is all inside the caliper and that's why we had to do that special turn the caliper back in um, instead of just pushing it back in like other rear disc brake systems. And everything back together. Now, the caliper and bracket bolt up on this style of rear brake caliper system, just the same as they do on any other brakes. Two bolts for the bracket, two bolts for the caliper, slide pins. Everything else is the same. It's just the design of the piston and having to deal with that cable hooked up to the back of the caliper. Um, but beyond that, everything else goes back together. We got a new rotor, brand new pads, everything nice and greased up and this customer is all good to go. Alright guys, that's it. We got the uh, new brake pads, rotors, uh, put on this 2009 Volkswagen Rabbit. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed watching this and seeing a little bit of a different brake setup for the rear brakes. Like I said, this applies to a number of vehicles, especially from the late 1990s to early 2000s. Um, but this being a 2009 obviously doesn't fall in that uh, age range and uh, still has it and newer Volkswagens have this style of rear brakes too. Um, so it's, it's still out there, it's just not as common as it used to be. But that's why we've got to have the tools that we have and the knowledge that we have to uh, be able to service brakes on a variety of vehicles. So hopefully you guys enjoyed watching this. Make sure you fill out the questions that go along with it and we'll talk soon. Thanks guys.